Hi there, beautiful soul. In many neuroplasticity techniques, they teach you to suppress and avoid what they call negative emotions. They label some emotions as positive and some as negative. It should be avoided at all times. And when they come up, suppress them immediately because they are going to be the root cause behind your symptoms. But is that really true? This is my take on it. So why does, for example, the lightning process condemn these so-called negative emotions? Like, for example, sadness, anger and fear. And when you experience them, they teach you to do a stop, to say, let's like this, stop and go to a happy place instead. Why do they do this? And does it really help? What they teach you in this neuroplasticity course or many other uh, brain rewiring techniques is that there are two pathways. One pathway is called the parasympathetic nervous system or rest and digest. And the other is called the sympathetic nervous system, fight or flight. One pathway will lead you to disease and one to health. And rest and digest is then leading you towards health. And you can imagine this state uh, in these courses and make it really vivid and do sort of like a really um, sort of a self-hypnosis technique where you really access these memories or create one of your own to really create for yourself a state of joy, peace and love. And doing that uh, frequently helps you to access this path of the parasympathetic nervous system, rest and digest more often and makes it um, unlikely for you to access the state of resistance, the state of the sympathetic nervous system, fight or flight, where you are ready to fight a tiger or maybe run away from danger. And of course, when you are experiencing a difficult moment, you might experience a difficult emotion that you can label as negative. But these emotions are um, boundaries. It's a signal for you that you're on the wrong path. So labeling these emotions as negative um, is something that usually other people do. Because when you experience anger as sort of a no, I don't want to do this because I want to stay in rest and digest. I want to have joy in my life, so I'm not going to keep up with this shit. You experience anger. And this anger is negative for someone else that doesn't want to deal with you, with your boundaries. So calling, labeling this uh, emotion negative is only valid when you can't change your situation because then you have to keep up with it and then it's better to zone out or to block it even further. But what we get in a course of doing a neuroplasticity technique is that you get yourself more often in a state of joy. But when you are more often in a state of letting go, a state of allowing, a state of living the moment, you can also let go of things that do not resonate with that, what we can call negative emotions. So you might ex experience sadness or anger coming up when you were in a good state. Should you then block it? Because I don't think so. Because what happens then is that you get again in a state of resistance. And resistance is another word for stress. And stress activates the sympathetic nervous system, the fight or flight mode. But if you then don't act, then you keep all the stress within you. So very often these neuroplasticity techniques can help people for a while until they don't anymore. Until the stress even piles up even further. And many people with chronic fatigue syndrome, however, they... Um, experience chronic fatigue syndrome because they have been doing these type of techniques of you know looking the other way too much too often too frequent and then the stress buildup is just intense and it can't be suppressed anymore there is just anxiety and then when someone tells you to suppress it even further is that really going to to help or is it the childish idea that we can once again find another way to suppress these emotions from ourselves. You can experience all kinds of symptoms when you suppress an emotion or when you suppress even symptoms this way. 
My, me, myself, I experienced panic attacks after doing the lightning process for a few months. And, you know, it did help me in the beginning because, quite frankly, in the beginning of well, the first two years for me, experiencing chronic fatigue syndrome and not understanding it really made me fall into a pit of negativity. And I also started to, you know, I didn't have belief anymore that I could heal and I didn't have trust in my body anymore. So therefore, going into uh, using this neuroplasticity technique can get you out of the pit of negativity. But then, going guiding you to uh, to a calmer place where you can release emotions, that is actually a good thing. And when I say the word releasing emotions, it already sounds a lot better, right? But you release the emotions by allowing them, by living them, by feeling them. It's a feeling, and a feeling needs to be felt, just like a thought needs to be thought about. And as well in the course, they tell you that these so-called negative emotions trigger the fight-or-flight state. But that is not true. An emotion doesn't trigger a fight-or-flight state. It's the resistance that triggers a fight-or-flight state. So I just want to get it out of the way. An emotion can be very, very beautiful if you allow it completely and release it. And you might feel so calm afterwards that you were thinking like, why do I need this neuroplasticity technique in the first, in the first uh, way? Nevertheless, in the alignment recovery program that you can find on my website, there is a module called neuroplasticity where we can really use the benefits of these techniques and put it into our advantage and not uh, outrunning um, things from the world that we don't like, always making our world smaller and smaller because we judge things as negative and, uh, and unwanted. So we can really use it in our advantage because there is truth to it, but the execution is, sorry to say this, a bit childish. The reason why I work differently is that um, a neuroplasticity technique can bring you to a place of safety, can bring you in a good mood, can bring you joy into your life. It makes it easier for you to enjoy yourself and also to release the negativity that has been suppressed and not to suppress it uh, after that because otherwise it doesn't make sense. And an emotional release is beautiful but if you focus only on emotional work you can also land in in a pit where you only drown in the negativity so it should be balanced and therefore in the program it's it's in a perfect balance too you know my suggestion is to work on maybe 30 minutes a day on releasing this stuff releasing the negativity but have the rest of the day sort of um, a joyful state and that over time you can reap the benefits of being in a calm and joyful state so that your body gets calmer, that you like to enjoy yourself more and that it becomes easier to, to release all the stress that, and that release will be beautiful and peaceful. And you can find the Alignment Recovery Program on my website. It's available via donations. Um, if you want to support me in any other way, sharing this video or um, donate me for this video, then all your support is welcome. And I wish you a beautiful day. Bye.